We're going to go game by game, matchup by matchup for week 11 and give you a must-start play for each game and also talk about a bunch of other players who are involved in that matchup. We'll talk about the must-start player. We'll talk about some run-back players on the other side of the football. That way you have an idea of what could happen with the game script. We'll go over the scenarios, help you out with setting your lineups. But what you need to do right now is click that subscribe button tap it with your finger with your phone tap it with the mouse on your computer because we're going to help you set your lineups every week we're going to help you with the waiver wire every week we go deep on the waiver wire every week we also help you win your trades we drop information on the daily on this channel with advanced metrics to help you make your decisions to help you with your research and everything else We'll be here next year as well, so click that subscribe button now so you don't miss out on next year either. Plus, Rick Flair's watching you. You don't want to disappoint him, so click that button. Stop missing out. Let's roll into this. Let's look at our 13 must-start players plus a bunch of other guys. In the first matchup we're looking at here, Chicago Bears at the Detroit Lions. we got a 48 over-under. This over-under is kind of high considering the matchup, considering what we've seen from previous weeks because the slates are usually running pretty low on the over-unders, but the implied point total from Vegas is pretty high here. They're expecting Detroit to run with this game because we got a deep spread here, 7.5 points favored for the Lions. Bears might be playing comeback in this game. We might see some points scored, but we're going to see some fantasy football contributors nonetheless. But our must-start play is... Jameer Gibbs, last three games, he's seen a 67.6 opportunity share. And the Bears have allowed 60 catches on the season to running back. 615 receiving yards to running back. So the receiving back on the team is going to get the workload. This favors Jameer Gibbs. However, when you think about the Detroit Lions here, Dave Montgomery is going to get his. He's going to get his opportunity. I'm on Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta. Start your studs in this matchup for the Detroit Lions. He's getting about seven targets a game. This is a good matchup for him. He should do well. You're not going to worry about him. Run backs, it's a little bit sketchy with the Bears. DJ Moore, because he is the alpha wide receiver in the offense. He's getting the targets. He's getting a little bit more air yards. Jonathan Foreman's on the injury report. Pay attention to him. But still, he's getting touches. He runs hot from time to time. So another player to monitor in this game and plus justin fields see what he's up to a fun game here to watch we got a high over under on this one so this one could break but who knows i expect detroit lions to run all over them i expect them to score a lot of points i expect both running backs to do something here and just the usual i'm on ross st brown going off maybe an ancillary wide receiver does something but your usual suspects you're starting in this matchup Arizona Cardinals at the Houston Texans. Another high over under here. 48 and a half. We got a deep spread. The Texans is in an interesting matchup here where they can run heavy on this team and they want to throw the football. They're going to push this offense. And with Kyler Murray back, that could make for an interesting game script. We could get a lot of sneaky fantasy contributors from this matchup this week, but we got to see how this holds true. Thinking about this, Devin Singletary is a guy who's ranked in the middle of the pack. You may want to think about starting because this is a very, very optimal matchup. Arizona allows 27.4 PPR points per game to running backs. They let running backs run all over them. And the games they do not allow the running backs to run all over them, it's because the passing game for that team going against them is just clicking so good. But 150 yards last week for Devin Singletary. He's getting some touches. Optimal game script. If you have a running back going up against the Cardinals, you're going to start them. You're going to want to put them in there because it's highly likely they're going to produce for you. Run backs for the Cardinals. You're looking at Marquise Brown, James Conner, Trey McBride. You're watching Kyler Murray. You're watching these Cardinals. This game could be a shootout here. CJ Stroud's going to sling it. He's going to drop dimes to Tank Dell. He's going to drop dimes to Noah Brown. Robert Woods could get his. What's Nico Collins doing? Is he back to health yet? But these wide receivers, any of them can get it. And just because we're pointing out Devin Singletary doesn't mean these wide receivers can hit either because 
It's a mixed bag with those guys. They're getting a lot of opportunity. C.J. Stroud's good. He's pushing it downfield. This is going to be a sneaky game to make stacks for in DFS. Now we're looking at the New York Giants at the Washington Commanders. The Giants are on the road. They got beat up last week. And we got a low over under here at 37. The first one on the slate under 40. The Commanders can sling the rock though. And the Giants allow a lot in the passing game. So we're going to look at Terry McLaurin here. Last three games is getting nine targets per game. 20.8% target share. 91.5 air yards per game. And the Giants are allowing 41.2 PPR fantasy points per game to wide receivers. That's the whole batch of wide receivers on the team. That's high. That's up there. That's a lot. Terry McLaurin is the steady eddy of the offense in the passing production. Look for him to get consistent workflow and targets in this game. We could see other wide receivers and pass catchers get work done too. Of course, the running backs. The commanders should roll here. They should be funneling the football pretty good. Sam Howell should have a day. And then watch Saquon Barkley working through an injury right now. Maybe in, maybe out. But honestly, you're not trusting many of these giants on the run back, even though one of them might hit for you in fantasy. Cowboys at the Panthers. 42.5 over under. Another juicy matchup for the Cowboys. The spread's deep at 10.5 points. They're expecting the Cowboys to roll in this matchup. Panthers might get killed here, and it probably will happen like we saw last week with the Giants. That being said, might be a Tony Pollard get-right game here. Last three games, though, he's seen a 60.8% opportunity share. Enough touches to get it done with 14.3 a game. Carolina's allowing 29 PPR fantasy points per game to running backs. They've allowed 15 touchdowns to running backs. Also, Rico Dowdle is a sneaky play this week. He might be in the sneaky start video. That'll come out tomorrow if you're interested in that. For those off-the-wall plays that could hit for us in fantasy. But Tony Pollard is due a get-right game. He's getting touches. He's getting workload. Just hasn't been hitting. This is a good matchup for that. They mentioned they still want to get him involved in the offense. Run backs. You're not trusting the Panthers. But since Adam Thielen's getting a lot of targets, he's at least going to get you by this week. He's at least going to help you out. He may not hit that upside. But he's at least going to get you by due to the amount of targets he's getting. Plus some mop-up duties. Raiders at the Dolphins here. 46.5 over-under. And we're expecting the Dolphins to roll here. We're expecting the Raiders to get killed. We're expecting this to be a high-scoring game. Most of the points should be on the Dolphins' side. We're looking at this in a nutshell, though. What are you going to want to do when you're playing the Dolphins? You're going to want to slow them down. How are you going to slow them down? with the run game and I guarantee you the Raiders are thinking about that considering they got a rookie at quarterback and Josh Jacobs an 80.2 percent opportunity share they're going to give him the football of course 55 touches in his last two games he's going to up that in this game he's going to get a lot of touches here they're going to try and control the clock probably not going to work track me on the other side with Tyreek Hill Jalen Waddle Raheem Mostert's on the mend might be in might be out pay attention to the practice reports might be different by the time you watch this video, but pay attention to him as he's nursing an injury. But still, the Dolphins side, you're starting your usual suspects. Raiders, you're a little sus. Devontae Adams is still getting targets and air yards, so you're probably going to put him out there still because there's going to be some run back opportunities. And then Josh Jacobs, I guarantee you, he at least gets a lot of touches. Steelers at the Browns, 33 over under. Vegas is saying this is going to be ugly. You got DTR, the rookie, in a quarterback for the Browns. The Steelers getting ugly game scripts. They're on the road, too, against a tough Browns defense. There's a lot of ugliness on both sides of the ball. It's going to be a great experiment, but we could also see it break because it broke last week against the Ravens. That could happen. So looking at our must-start here, Jerome Ford. Because he ran heavily against the Steelers in Week 2, with 22.1 PPR fantasy points and 106 rushing yards versus Pittsburgh. He's already went off. Why not again? Why not again? You got a rookie quarterback in. Who are you going to lean on? You're going to lean on that rookie quarterback to sling the rock? Or are you just going to hand it to Jerome Ford? Let him get some dump offs. Let him get out in space. He's got speed to burn. He's bursty. Let him get some opportunities here. You know that's going to happen. But this matchup's probably going to be ugly. You got DTR and a Browns defense. So no matter. Which offense is on the field, there's going to be questions. Runbacks, Deontay Johnson, getting a lot of targets. George Pickens, not been hitting lately, but he gets a lot of air yards. Big plays waiting to happen. 
and it's Jalen Warren. He had 12.6 PPR fantasy points against Cleveland in Week 2. But don't forget about Najee either. Warren's been using the passing game a little bit more, and they're saying he's going to get a little bit more touches. We'll have to see about that. It's a tough Browns defense. I'm not expecting fireworks. Titans at the Jaguars. We got a 40 over under. Another nasty game predicted by Vegas. I do not see how this one breaks unless Will Levis goes off. Will Levis has to go off to push the game script. He's really only done that once. Will Levis isn't really pushing it downfield and connecting. But DeAndre Hopkins is getting a lot of work still. And he still must start because he's still getting a lot of targets. And a ton of air yards. 446 air yards in his last three games. Almost 150 air yards per game. And if he connects on a few of those, you're talking about Splash City with DeAndre Hopkins. Whether he hits or misses, if you're getting 150 air yards a game, you're just starting the dude, and you're just hoping to the gods. Because Will Levis is slinging that rock, and if he connects a one or even two, it's a big game. Run backs. You're looking at the Jaguars here. Travis Etienne. Calvin Ridley is very streaky. Christian Kirk has been kind of steady here. And you kind of want to pass it on the Titans defense there. A little bit of a pass funnel there. Travis Etienne can get it done in the passing game. Derrick Henry's going to get his touches. He's still got some upside there. Don't forget about him. So it's a little bit slower and off and on with Will Levis back there. DeAndre Hopkins, though, he's getting a ton of air yards. Chargers at the Packers, 44 over under. And the Chargers are on the road. They can push the game script with their offense. And the Packers got an opportunity here where they can push the pace with their offense, get these wide receivers going, maybe a little Luke Musgrave action. But Keenan Allen, because he's been getting spanned, over 10,000 receiving yards on his career, and he's been getting spanned. 42 targets in his last three games. 10.5 targets per game, 30.9% target share. Palmer going out on IR, and they've been just spamming him with targets. Quinton Johnson's getting a lot of run. Don't forget about him, but 103.8 air yards per game. Eckler, we're not sleeping on him, but Allen needs a light shine on how much he's getting spammed. Run backs here. Romeo Dubs, Jaden Reed, Christian Watson. Watson's dealing with another injury here. Pay attention to that. But like I say about these Packers wide receivers, they take their turns. One being the stud for the week, one being mid, and one busting, and it's a carousel. You just got to start one and hope for the best, and that's all I can say about that because it's game script dependent. Now we're looking at the Bucks at the Niners. Fun game script here. We might see the Niners airing it out here a little bit because you want to throw in the Buccaneers, and when they get pushed, the Bucks want to throw it, and it's going to be tough moving the ball on the Niners, but you can in some spots. 41.5 over under. I say it's going to be moderate scoring to lower like they have it here. For Vegas, but I can also see a lot of fantasy points being scored. That being said, we got to Rick roll it and troll you guys with Christian McCaffrey because he's a must start every game. But really, we're looking at Brandon Ayuk because we got to troll the haters who mention Christian McCaffrey whenever we throw him up on here. If they pop off in the comments, go make fun of them. But Brandon Ayuk might be getting some targets in this game because you want to throw on the Tampa Bay. Buccaneers, you get some volume in those matchups. Look at the Texans when they play them. Look at some other matchups with the Buccaneers, and you'll see some fireworks in the passing game, and that causes Tampa Bay to throw the ball a little bit more. Might be different with this matchup according to the Niners defense, but you got Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Rashad White. The targets are concentrated on both sides of the ball. We know who's getting it, so you know who you're starting here. You're starting your usual suspects. Looking at the Jets at the Bills, 39.5 over under. And things could happen in this game as a divisional matchup. Bills need to prove themselves right now after last week's game. The Jets' defense is no joke. Thinking about that, James Cook as a guy that might sneak up on you. 10.3 PPR fantasy points in week one against the Jets. Got to talk about him because we got to talk about some running backs. We got to talk about those opportunities. We can also talk about Stephon Tiggs because he also went off against the Jets in Week 1. The Bills can do that. The Bills can move the football on the Jets because they've already proved it this year. Runbacks, usual suspects again. Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson. Might be a higher scoring game than expected because I bet you the Bills want to come out firing after what they did last week. I guarantee it. 
So expect them to push the pace a little bit more. Now we're seeing the Seattle Seahawks on the road to the Rams, 46 over under. A game you want to look at to make stacks with, because I don't think a lot of people are going to run to this game. It looks like Matt Stafford's back. He's practicing. Looks like he's good to go. That's going to push the game script here. And we're going to be looking at Puka Nakua again. With Matthew Stafford in, he's averaging 19.11 points per game, getting 7.62 balls caught per game, and 11 targets. The volume's going to be back. The good targets are going to be back. So we're going to see some volume here. You can throw on Seattle. You can throw a good clip on them. And the Rams are going to do so. Run backs here. DK Metcalf. Brees Hall looks like he's going to play a second game. But you know that's an error down there. Also lock it. Walker versus Charbonnet is the matchup we're going to watch here. We want to watch the snaps. Charbonnet has beat Walker in snaps in the last three weeks. We want to watch the touch share. We want to see what's happening with those two running backs. There's no guarantees here. But I think one of them may hit in this matchup. Now we're looking at the Vikings at the Denver Broncos, and we got a 42.5 over under. We're seeing if Justin Jefferson's going to be back. Looks like he's practicing to some degree right now. You can run on the Broncos. You can throw in the Vikings. This could be fireworks. This could be decent. Dobbs might be running all over the Broncos too. That being said, Ty Chandler. Ty Chandler. If Alexander Madison's out, fire up. Ty Chandler here. Denver's allowing 32.9 PPR fantasy points per game to running backs. He also had a 30-yard touchdown called back last week. That could have been immense for his fantasy value. If you were able to pick up Ty Chandler, Walmart, Keaton Mitchell, Aldi, Devin A. Chan, then you might be in the good here. 136 rushing yards allowed per game by Denver. Dobbs might be getting half of that. That being said, Jordan Addison, look at him too. Run backs here, usual suspects. Javante Williams, Cortland Sutton, maybe Jerry Judy. Might be a little bit risky, but you can throw on the Vikings, so he might hit for you. Eagles at the Chiefs here, 45 and a half over under. So the over under is kind of in the middle here. 50 is the high range, 40 and lower is considered kind of low. Maybe like 42 and lower, 43 or lower. So it's right in the middle because these defenses can get kind of stagnant. However, both these offenses can move the football, so you kind of got a good clash here when you look at the game scripts. I could see it be moderate scoring with a lot of fantasy points still. That being said, you can throw in the Eagles. Rashi Rice is seeing an increase in snaps here, and it's kind of sneaky here. Week 7, he saw 59%. Week 8, saw 68%. Week 9, saw 68%. Prior to that, it was like in the 40s. He's seeing a fair amount of targets. He's scoring touchdowns. And you can throw on Philly. So they're probably going to try and throw on Philly here and move the ball at a fast pace here. And they like to sling the lower A dot. And Philly allows a lower A dot on the acuity of targets. It's kind of a good match here. Maybe some of the other wide receivers are hit. Philly's allowing 47.1 PPR fantasy points per game to wide receivers. Some of that could go to Rice there. Run backs. Usual guys. A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith. Maybe DeAndre Swift, especially if this game breaks and becomes a shootout. Maybe some more players as well. But your main guys, you're starting, you're starting your usual players here, and that's what you're looking at. Those are 13 must-start players for Week 11. We went game by game, matchup by matchup, and talked about a ton of players today to help you set your lineups, helped you get those wheels turning in your head as you're looking at your fantasy teams this weekend. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the way out. It's going to help you with your research for the rest of the year. And in the next year, Rick Flair's watching. Don't disappoint him. I want to thank you for watching, though. Catch you on the next video.